guys, welcome back to the Ready Duck channel. In this video, I'm gonna give you five reasons why I think every trailerable sailboat should have synthetic rigging. I'm gonna show you my rig that I set up on the Ready Duck. We're also gonna go through and I'm gonna show you how you can rig your own boat. All right guys, so the reason number one I think everybody should have synthetic rigging on a trailerable sailboat is that it is extremely strong. I purchased 3 16 Dyneema, uh, it's called Am Steel Blue by Samson Ropes. This stuff is insanely strong. It's rated for 5,400 pounds, which is enough to hold six of these with me in it suspended in the air just off of one line. So that's kind of insane overkill, but you know, that's uh, what you get when you get this stuff. It's actually stronger than braided steel for the same diameter. So 3 16 versus 3 16 this stuff is way, way stronger. Crazy. Reason number two is that Dyneema is way, way lighter than stainless steel. We're talking like seven times lighter. And you can definitely notice a difference even on a small boat like this, not having all that weight up high. So reason number three is that you can splice it all yourself. It is very easy to splice, and I do most of my splicing with actually in this makeshift wire that I bent um, and use this as a wire fit. Um, they do sell fits that are specifically for splicing, and they work good, but I do most of mine with this. Uh, I did all of the rigging on this boat myself. It was very easy. Um, shrouds, uh, forestay. I even did a Dyneema halyard. So very easy to splice and very lightweight tools. You don't need anything special. Reason number four is that it's extremely soft. Um, you know, just banging around on the boat, it's really not a big deal. Um, I used to hate winding up the steel cables and trying to attach them to the mast. Uh, they just scratch the heck out of the boat. Um, you know, because we're trailer sailors, we take the rig up and down every time we go out. So. Having something that's flexible like this and easily coilable is very nice to have. I just kind of wind mine up on the mast and tie it to the mast and that's it, it's secured. It's not going to kink or get ruined up there. And last but not least is cost. It's not overly expensive, in fact I came out uh, a little bit cheaper than if I were to do it in stainless steel. So that made me real happy to not spend too much money uh, changing this over. So for my setup, I used 3 16 Amsteel Blue and I lashed it onto low friction rings and also used Caligo terminals. I chose to do lashings because it's much lighter and it's very easy to adjust without tools. Um, you are basically going to go through the low friction ring and the terminal that's connected to your chain plate. I went three times and basically you, you tension it and then do half hitches around the whole body of the uh, of the line. And, the, and for the lashing material, I just used uh, 1 8 inch Dyneema, uh, same stuff, the uh, Amsteel Blue. So I went with low friction rings because it was much, much cheaper than buying uh, terminals. I could have gone with the same terminals that I used at the shroud connections at the very top, but I just wanted to save a little bit of money and I kind of, I like the way the, the low friction rings looked. Uh, so I didn't see a downside to it. They're a little bit lighter, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm happy with them. Let's start by gathering some tools. We will need our splicing fids, sharp scissors, or a knife, tape measure, and a pen. The first step is to measure 50 times the diameter of the Dyneema from the tail and make the first mark. Next, grab your terminal or low friction ring and wrap the Dyneema around, lining up the first mark. 
Make a second mark where the line touches itself. Allow a little room here or the splice will be too tight to get the ring in later. Now that we have our first and second marks, grab your fid and insert it into the first mark, being sure to go through the very center of the line. Now, insert the tail of the line into the end of the fid and pull the line through itself, creating a twist and a hole in the line. Repeat this process on the second mark, making sure to pull the tail through the same direction as the first mark. Then we will have two holes or twists in the line. Now, focusing on the line between the holes, we go to the first mark and untwist the line through itself, creating a loop. Pull the second mark through as well. Still focusing on the line between the holes, we untwist the second mark. I make this look easy, but trust me, it takes a little practice. In the end, we end up with a Brummel lock splice. Next, grab your low friction ring or terminal and fit it into the eye. Hopefully we have left enough room when making our marks. Next, we will run a wire fid through the middle of the main line, starting a bit below the length of the tail. Run the fid through and exit at the base of the tail. Insert the end of the tail into the wire fid and gently pull the tail through the main line. This usually isn't easy and takes a little patience. This took me three times on this occasion to get it through. Once it is through, we are ready to do our taper. Start by unwinding about half of the tail, separating all 12 strands. Now, we need to cut each of the 12 strands that we separated evenly spaced so the strands are all different lengths and create a gentle taper all the way to the end. Once the taper is complete, we can smooth out the main line over the taper, burying it inside. Next, we can splice on our lashing lines to the terminal or low friction ring. We start the same way by making our marks and run our fid through the second mark. Now, we do something different and run the fid through the first mark. Once it is in, we can pull the end of the main line 
through the tail. This method is the easiest way to create the lock splice, but can only be done when the tail of the main line is free. The next step is to taper and bury the tail of the lashing line. So some downsides, um, people say you're gonna get a lot of chafe using Dyneema, but I put a four-stay, a Dyneema four-stay on this boat, and people don't recommend you do that because they say it's gonna chafe through. Well, I've been sailing for two years, uh, quite a bit. I mean, ever since I've owned the boat, every video we've done, we've had this Dyneema rigging, and you can't notice any spot where it's chafed. Now, my Hanks are uh, soft shackles, also made out of Dyneema, and typically rope on rope connection like that, you'd get a lot of chafe, but I didn't get any. And I, I figured if I did, well, it's not a big deal. It's probably only about 20 bucks worth of Dyneema and I'd just make a new one. But I haven't noticed anything so far, like very, very minute uh, fuzzies in there. So I think I'm gonna get easily, easily 10 years out of it if I keep sailing like I do. Another downside is UV damage. Uh, they say if this is left outside in the tropics, you'll get about eight years out of it before it is damaged too too much to use it again. So, but for a trailer sailor, I mean, my mine sits in this garage when I'm not sailing it, so it's really not going to see any UV. So, another downside um, is that. Dyneema has construction stretch, so when I spliced everything, um, the rope kind of loosens up a little bit. So um, the first couple times you go sailing in like 15 knots, you know, get some good wind, your rigging is going to loosen up. So you're going to have to, over the next couple months, as you do heavy sails, you're going to have to tighten it up, you know, each time until all that stretch is gone. I finally reached that point, um, you know, earlier this spring, and I haven't had to adjust it at all. Um, and the tension stays right where I put it and where I want it and I don't have to deal with it anymore. There are ways around it. You know, you can buy um, a higher end Dyneema that has been heat treated and it takes all the stretch out. You can also pre-stretch it, but I just sailed with mine and kept adjusting it. It's not a big deal. Guys, thanks for watching. I hope this video was helpful and gave you ideas on how to rig your own boat. If you guys have any ideas on how I can make the Ruddy Duck better, please leave a comment below. Also, a huge thanks to Kevin and Scott for donating to the channel and making this and future episodes possible. If you'd like to donate, there's a link on the channel page. And as always, thanks for watching.